We are here to present the results of a two-week study on the use of drones, right? But let me go back a little longer than two weeks to explain why we're doing this. If people don't have titles, it's harder for them to borrow money and maybe start a business. But there are about 24 million land parcels in the Philippines. Only half or 12 million have titles. We help lobby for the passage of Republic Act 1023 or the Residential Free Patent Law. This was taken on by the organization because at that time, before 2011, the rate of new titling in the Philippines was around 5,000 new titles per year. It's going to take more than 100 years to title all those properties. Now that we're implementing the residential patent, there are a lot of people who have been benefiting this because those who cannot afford to hire a lawyer to make representations that they can get the title, they were able to have the title. The number of original titling jumped up to 50 to 60,000 per year and it has held steady since then, right? Still a long time to go if you consider 8 million divided by 50,000. We're trying to figure out the policies as well as the procedures to introduce new technology that can increase the pace of titling so that we can help title all of those millions of parcels. The technology for property rights project is development of the use of drones to help improve and increase the pace of title. If you don't have a subdivision survey, you don't get the title. Right now, it's kind of expensive to pay for one, and it takes some time. So we're looking at the drone technology with GPS as a cost-effective and faster alternative. We've been working on disaster sites for the last six years. Uh, one of the things that actually confused us a lot was that people don't want to evacuate their land. And then we found out through you know, several years of working is that the reason why they don't want to evacuate their land is because they don't have property rights. So one of the big differences when Omidyar, PAF, and FEF gave us this project is that it gives opportunity to go deep dive into a real fundamental issue here in the Philippines. So we are looking at a decentralization of mapping capacities which will allow communities to harness the advantages of the aerial perspective and aerial mapping at a local level. Thanks to open source, we are able to put together our own platforms, which makes the entire operation a lot more affordable and a lot more sustainable. Nowadays, we can repair our own equipment as opposed to in the past where we had to send the equipment off to the manufacturer to have it prepared we will be able to get a very, very detailed, clear picture of what is on the ground like today. Cordoba was the best place to test this technology because there is a strong partnership between DNR and the local government. Before you can use the drone for, for doing the survey, you have to be able to know which lot parcels are ready for subdivision, which occupants are ready to apply for a title. In this current project here, our focus is on something very abstract, which is boundaries. They are imaginary lines manifested by cornerstones of the properties. And these cornerstones are not always visible from the air. But despite that, most roof lines are discernible. And if properly pre-marked, most of the uncovered moorhorns will be visible from the drone and therefore mappable. And we can determine coordinates of them very precisely. We were asked by the LMB here in Cebu, especially in Cordova, to do lot surveys for several properties. Uh, we divided it into three major groups as a process. First, we have to establish our base station on the monument of Namria uh, because, again, all the maps should be networked to the national grid system. Once we have set that up, then we will be able to put ground control points. These ground control points uh, serve as a reference on the photo of the drone for it to be part of the national grid network because without these photo control points, the data that we generate from the drone itself would not be networked to the national grid system. So this is highly required. Once you have the ground control points on the ground, we then fly the drone. We fly the drone on a crisscross pattern, meaning we do a raster scan. And then from there, we are taking photos. And then from these photos, we're able to stitch them. Once we stitch the photos together, we use the ground control points, use it as a reference to this aerial map now to make it into a geo-reference map according to our national standards. Now with micro area, one of the things that they actually provide as a platform is that we don't have any more to put the ground control points. You still have to have the base station on the monument, but you don't have to put the ground control points anymore because they had a special GPS platform that you put on the drone that communicates directly into the base station on top of the monument. 
Whenever you fly the drone, you only fly it for 10 minutes over 3 hectares. But it will take you 6 hours to do the ground control points. So if you're able to remove the ground control point operations, you immediately save 6 hours. So instead of spending half a day on a 3 hectare land, you can be able to do 40 hectares in one day. That allows you to pay less for people, pay less for logistics. The biggest cost of any survey is the logistics. This amounts for more than 60% of the cost of a survey. Nine hectares in one flight. But if you look at the uh, amount of data and the areas we can cover in one day, this was a 10 minute flight. Now I can move on to the next one, to the next one, and the next one. Uh -huh. But the nice thing is as well, every flight covers a certain area. So that area can now, if we had a computer here to do it, could take the imagery and start processing already. Now on the tightening part, this is where we then use the maps in order to adjudicate. So once we fly over the area, we print out the maps, your reference according to the Philippine national standards of mapping, and then we show that to the community as a high resolution map. The community will be able to identify where their lot is. If you give them an additional survey of lines, they don't know where their house is. And most people know their land via landmarks. So if you're able to show that on an area map, they'll be able to draw the line of their property. Once they have drawn the line and identified the boundaries of their lot, we go back to the area, establish the traditional concrete monuments uh, in along the property to identify the boundaries. We fly the drone again and use that as a reference when we submit to the LMB, the final survey lab. We look forward to a more concerted effort by the development agencies and development donors to focus on the democratization of mapping technology. It is possible right now. Um, the costs have come down drastically. A lot of it can be automated and therefore is much less uh, skill dependent as classical photogrammetry. It's high tech now. Nung una, gamit tayo ng ano, transit, matagal yun eh. But now, if the drone will be used today, it's easy to survey the lot. It's less time to do the survey. So it's very nice if the drone will be close through. After I experienced subdivision survey using drone, I can compare it with Total Station. Total Station takes a lot of setting up of instruments. Using drones is very efficient for a subdivision survey. You produce an uh, image with such a high resolution. I think there's a lot of opportunity to use it in adjusting the old surveys, assessing the quality of old cadastro surveys, and also in moving towards putting additional information such as vertical component, or moving towards 3D cadastro. I think it has a lot of usefulness. Introduction of drone technology in our country is timely because it makes our work faster in terms of manpower and resources. If you use drone, it is not stated in our manual. Our manual of land survey is not only being referred to by the DNR and the approval of survey, but also by all the practicing genetic engineers in the Philippines. So, use of the drone, it should be stated in the manual. With the advent of the RDK and SS total station, we drafted a policy on the use of such equipment because we have to prescribe a rule, certain standards, or so on to our money. I believe we shall be doing the same for the use of drones. I strongly believe that using drone technology in land surveying would create a great impact in land titling in the Philippines, especially in the government side. We hope that the LGUs can participate in this endeavor of making use of new technologies to title the properties of their constituents. Ever since the AO6 2011 was issued, there are more than 100 LGUs in partnership with DNR. They are enthusiastic to get into the partnership because number one, it helps them to improve their real property records. Number two, it helps them to generate more taxes from real property. And number three, because it helps them to serve their people. When we work together with the local government units, it's very easy for us to do the titling. And for the local government units at this time who are not yet engaged with this kind of collaboration, then I would like to encourage you to work with us, to work with the foundation, as well as our Ascendro office. There is a lot of benefits that local government can get. We think this is a potential game changer that can help the Philippine government and Philippine citizens gain title to their land so that the land markets can function and land can be traded and go to its best use. 
most people think of drones as something dangerous, something that should be regulated, something that should be stopped. But like any technology, it's how you use it, right? They're not the solution for everything, but they can modernize and speed up the way in which we understand the world and the way we claim title to certain parts of it. The use of drones will definitely be a critical step. We are looking forward to the future and we believe that the DNR to the land management bureau will be at the forefront of this initiative.